Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himbar, and today I have another and excitingly new topic video for you, but I'll get right into it after the intro. Okay, so I've never made a video like this before, but this is mostly just an invitation to join me. So I decided several weeks ago that I mostly wanted to focus on reading sword and sorcery novels for November of this year, November of 2021. And I would like you all to join me, of course. So this is sort of a TBR for November, but in reality, this is just a pool of books I will be pulling from to read in November. And I think I will be able to keep myself entertained with sword and sorcery since these are actually pretty varied in their style and theme and prose and like release year. I'm gonna go over the ones I have here, but really what I want is that there's a lot of sword and sorcery I'm not familiar with. I am relatively new to the sword and sorcery genre, but it's something I've really come to really, really enjoy. And so I wanna go over some of these books, maybe as recommendations for you if you wanna join in, but also just to, to set out a call to let me know of more books because I haven't read very many sword and sorcery novels, but I would like your recommendations. I mean, there's always a chance I've read it already, but still give me the recommendations. And I, this could be anything. This could be novels, this could be a novella, this could be short stories, whether that's in a magazine, whether that's a new magazine or an old magazine. I really, really would like some more sword and sorcery. It's very underrated as far as I'm aware these days. And I mean, I love me some heroic fantasy. And in fact, some and sometimes these days, a lot of modern fantasy books that are really written as sword and sorcery will not even be advertised as such because people don't even know what it is or they're definitely not looking for anything labeled as such and so i really really want some recommendations for anyone who is more familiar and more comfortable with the sword and sorcery genre anyways i'm going to get right into the books that i have here that i'm hoping to read i mean i'm definitely going to read all of these at some point whether i get to these all in november i think it'll be highly unlikely but we'll see what I'm feeling in November. I mean, I am big mood reader anyways. But again, like I said, I think this is a good variety. So anyways, straight on top, we have The Sword of Rionin. Or at least I'm I think I'm saying that right. It's by Lee Brackett. I've never read anything by Brackett. I believe she's pretty well known. I've heard comparisons to Burroughs for the most part, but funnily enough, I have not read Burroughs either. There might be a Burroughs book in the stack here if you haven't seen it. But this book is from the 50s, I believe. It may be from the 40s. This copy, at least, is from the 50s. actually in really good shape. This is Sword and Planets, as far as I'm aware. It takes place, it looks like, at least by the, by the blurb on the back, it takes place millions of years ago on the planet Mars. And so I'm looking forward to this one. It is exceptionally small. This book is only about 120 pages. If I were to read it, this would be the shortest book I read all year. So if anyone recommends this one, let me know, because I'll definitely take the recommendations that I really should try to get to from this deck, but also your other recommendations that I don't have here. And I probably don't know, and if I were just be honest, if it's not here. Second, we have the sequel to a book I recently read, it was an anthology. So this is Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn, the second Thieves' World story set. So I really enjoyed the first Thieves' World. I only read it just back about a month ago at this point. And Really, really enjoyed it. This one's about the same length. It has some different authors. It has some of the same authors from that first volume. And I'm really looking forward to reading this one when I do get around to it. And that might be in November. But again, this is stories that are shared world from a bunch of different authors. And they almost all the stories, as far as I'm aware, take place in the city of Sanctuary. Now, if you want to know more about the first book, you can watch my review for it. But again, something I really, really enjoyed and something I want to get back to, of course, with Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn. Then we have one that I think may be a little bit less, lesser well-known. This is Kothar of the Magic Sword. Now, I believe this is an appendix in book. It is written by Gardner F. Fox. And I think this sticker on the corner is actually just part of the book. <laughs> and so there is no US, uh, there is no... Um, barcode on the book. It is older and it also is very short. I don't see a date in this book. So anyway, this is a book I'm looking forward to very, I imagine somewhat Conan-like, but I don't really know. And so I honestly, I haven't heard anything about it. I have, I mean, besides the fact that it's mentioned by Gary Gygax and Appendix N, I have not heard a single reference by anyone to this book. Now, maybe I'm looking in the wrong places, but especially if anyone is trying to read more Appendix N books, you may want to read this one with me, and if you like that idea, then maybe I'll make it a point to read this book. 
Now we have a newer book. This book actually just came out last year in 2020, and that is In the Palace of Shadow and Joy by DJ Butler. This is a far future, I believe, sort of planet book, and it is about a duo in the spirit of Fawford and the Grey Mouser. This is Androgit and Fix, and this is the first novel, though I believe there are other short stories and other anthologies by DJ Butler. I'm a big fan of DJ Butler. I've never read anything Sword and Sorcery by him. As far as I'm aware, this is his only Sword and Sorcery stuff. For two. I'm really, really looking forward to it since, as I mentioned, he is one. Of, he is actually one of my favorite authors, as far as I would say, in the recent years. So I'm looking forward to In the Palace of Shadow and Joy. And if any one of you wants to read it, then be my guest. Similarly, in some aspects, it is a little thicker. This book is not quite 500 pages, actually. This is Oath of Swords by David Weber. This is a 90s sword and sorcery, I believe. It's a little lighthearted, as far as I'm aware. They got a take on a sort of a classical fantasy race here. I believe this this guy here, the big guy there, and another one of the characters there, they have very big ears, and I believe they they change colors or something when he gets like super emotional, so based off his emotions. And I believe he's like a paladin or something of the war god. I'm not really sure. I've had this book for a while. I've never read any of Weber's work, and I want to. If anyone has anything to say about Oath of Swords, let me know. But this is one that I may also get to in November. We'll see. So Sword and Sorcery November wouldn't be Sword and Sorcery November if it wasn't for Edgar Rice Burroughs, right? So I've never actually read Burroughs, like I mentioned earlier. This is my copy of A Princess of Mars I've had for a little bit. Not a very big book. The one, again, that I want to get to. Awesome Michael Whalen cover here as well. And again, never read any Burroughs. John Carter of Mars stuff right here. And then one that, you know, sometimes I always forget that he's considered sword and sorcery and that is David Gemmel. This is King Beyond the Gates. This is actually the American version, first American version. It actually says book three of the Jornai trilogy. I have no clue why. This is the second Jornai book he ever came out with. For some reason they put Waylander as book two for some reason. I don't really know why. This is what I meant to get to a couple months ago but I wasn't able to fit it in but I really enjoyed Against the Horde or that's the version I read, Legend as it's commonly called and commonly seen as earlier this year and I want to get back to David Gemmel. He's a very quick and easy read. I mean, compared to like epic fantasy, he's also really small. Compared to some sword and sorcery, he's actually, the books are actually quite large. But I wanted to get to this one. And again, if you think I should get to it, then let me know. Then we have another new one. I believe this was from last decade. This is The Hammer and the Blade by Paulus Kemp, who is actually an author I really enjoy. I've read about eight novels from Paulus Kemp at this point. All Forgotten Realms novels, all Air of Kale novels. But this is, I always enjoyed the buddy-buddy ship, at least later in the series, of Kale and Riven. And I feel like, well, it's probably better with Egil and Nyx. Though I actually don't know how to say their names. I think it's Egil. Maybe it's Ail. I don't actually know. But Ail and Nyx. So this is the first book in the series. I believe there's three books in the series out right now. I don't know if there's any more planned. But again, one definitely in the spirit of Fawford and the Grey Mouser. And so that has me very excited, also because I enjoy Kemp. Then we have Swords in the Mist. This is the third volume of Fawford and the Grey Mouser books by Fritz Leiber. I've read his first two Swords in Devil Tree and Swords Against Death. If you haven't read any Fritz Leiber, I would absolutely recommend it. I am loving Fawford and the Grey Mouser. And this is one I want to get to very soon. And I mean, if you want to start with Fawford and the Grey Mouser, I have done reviews for those previous two books. But I'll just say right here that it might not actually be a bad idea to start with the second one because it is better overall and I think gives you a better feel for Falcon and the Great Monster. But that being said, I've only read the first two. So Swords in the Mist. I'm really hoping to get to this one. I, I think no matter what anyone says, I think I'll probably read this one anyways, but we'll see. And then we had one I wanted to read last month as well. That is The Fortress of the Pearl, which I always want to call The Fortress of Pearl, which I think sounds better. And it is by Michael Moorcock. This is technically the second chronological story of Elric of Milne from the Elric Saga. And I read the first one in August as the channel buddy read and I really enjoyed it. This one came out later. I believe this is from the late 80s. It's a little thicker than the other ones I have, but presumably it's good. And so I want to see what those first adventures of Elric are after he leaves his island of Mel Nimine. Oh yeah, the next books are a little bigger. This one actually is one deserves a caveat. So I started reading this a couple months ago. So these are Conan stories by Robert E. Howard, of course. And I'm not super far into it. So I'll actually be reading this one through October and hopefully November I will finish it because I want to finish this and make a similar video to what I did for Clark Ashton Smith 
of me experiencing them for the first time, mostly because they're known for their short stories. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to review a novel that I don't have or that they don't have in some cases. So I'm reading this. I hope to release my experiencing Robert E. Howard's Conan for the first time in November. So anyways, I am really enjoying it so far. I think it's really awesome and what a master of the, the genre that he created. So not very surprising there. But let me know what your favorite Conan stories are. I know there are complete Conan compilations, though I believe the ones in this set, I believe there's three books that do give you all of the all of the stories, but it's over three volumes rather than just one big one. Then we have one that this is the one that I'm not sure fits super well out of all of them. And that is Implied Spaces by Walter John Williams. I've heard this described as Sword and Singularity. This is a sci-fi novel. And honestly, I've heard it even involves some Matrioska variants and Dyson spheres, which are awesome mega structures that I always love. Not very big, but I hear there's a lot of fantasy elements into it. And said, I've heard it described as Sword and Singularity, which sounds really interesting. And this is one I've been wanting to get for a while. I've had it for several months. And so if I get to Implied Spaces, I will let you know how it is, of course. And then last but not least, I have some of Robert Jordan's The Conan Chronicles. So I believe Robert Jordan wrote several Conan novels. Honestly, I always hear people say that the best Conan is Robert E. Howard, but sometimes people make the mention that Robert Jordan is probably the second best. Still not the best, it's still not the same, but it's still pretty good. And I'm a big fan of Robert Jordan. I thought his Wheel of Time was a little bit was a little bit prolix, if I were to be honest. It, I felt it was a little long-winded even. And But I have read one shorter novel by Robert Jordan. That is not The New Spring, although I am hoping to get to that soon. It was The Warrior of the Altai. And I really, really, really enjoyed it because I love Jordan's prose and I love his storytelling capabilities. The Warrior of the Altai is a complete story in one novel and it's a short novel. And so I'm hoping to get to at least one of the books in here. The first one is Conan the Invincible, I believe. There are three in here. There's another set that I believe has two or three more novels by Robert Jordan about Conan. And so anyways, if you have read these, then let me know how they hold up and how good they are and if I should read them in November. Anyways, those are the books that I have out to read for my Sword and Sorcery binge in November. I think there there's enough variety there to keep me entertained. And if you, again, if you have any recommendations, I honestly absolutely want them. That's, that's half the point of this video is that I want your sword and sorcery recommendations. So share this video with anyone that you know has any interest or love or has some experience with sword and sorcery. Now for your information, I do read a lot of D&D books, which is how I got into sword and sorcery in the first place. They are a little different, but in some ways they are in a very similar vein. So anything of that sort, that's what I want. And I invite you to join me in November reading sword and sorcery novels novellas, short stories, whatever. As you notice, I didn't have any magazines here. I would love to. So recommend away, please. Anyways, this has been Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I will catch you in November with Sword and Sorcery November. I know that doesn't alliterate. Maybe I should have done it in September. That's okay, it already passed. I'll catch you next time.